This penguin is just so stinging cute. Hi, my name is Alice the Fabric Ninja, and today we are going to turn this adorable penguin into an ornament. I've made it a little bit larger than I use on the gift bag and the cord keeper here at three inches tall, and I've already cut my pieces out using my Cricut. I bonded this felt onto freezer paper by ironing it, and then I cut them out with a rotary blade. If you want to cut these out with your Cricut, a rotary blade is the best idea, but you can also use the fine point blade if you're going to use not cheap felt. Cheap felt just does not cut with the fine point blade. However, Cricut felt absolutely does. So I have two black pieces here for the front and the back. I have a white tummy. I have a yellow nose, beak, and I have two of these wings. They have a little bit of a shape to them. So you wanna make sure you have yourself a right wing and a left wing, just turn it over. And these little flat edges are going to be facing towards the center. And they will go on just like this. Now for my ornament, I'm going to be doing hand embroidery, but you may want to just use glue. That's okay especially for attaching these pieces, glue will work just fine. But when you put the two pieces together, if you want any stuffing inside, I'm definitely going to suggest that you actually sew the two pieces together. I'm gonna tack the pieces in place, which is a little bit of glue, but then I'm gonna do hand embroidery to bring the whole thing together, to really make it look like that vintage ornament that I just love the look of. So let me walk you through the supplies that I have here. As I said, we have our felt. This is just a little bit of polyfill. I'm gonna need such a tiny amount of this. I just wanna make it a little puffier. I am using some tacky glue to hold the layers together, totally optional. You could also use sticky felt if you wanted to just stick all the pieces together, but that's gonna be temporary. Sticky felt does not stick to felt very well. It um, comes off after it's been handled for a bit, but it will hold things in place. I have some embroidery needles here. These are large eye needles, and I have lots of different sizes. I just picked some that I like. As long as your needle has a, a decent point on it, you don't want it to be too huge so it doesn't leave a hole in your felt, but I prefer sharps, but you can use any needle that makes you happy here. Then I have some embroidery floss. Embroidery floss comes on these skeins here and you can take the end and pull it out. I wasn't really sure what colors I wanted to use. I think I'm gonna actually go with this lighter gray, which is from my collection. I didn't write the number on it and, oh, there it is, 415, I think. I think that's my mother's handwriting actually, oh well. I believe that when you are going to do hand embroidery, you might as well make it show. I like using thread and embroidery floss that contrast so you can see it. Because if I'm spending all this time hand sewing, I want to be able to see it. So I'm gonna stick mostly to this color. I'm gonna use some yellow on the beak. I may just embroider the beak. I have this darker yellow too. And the black I'm gonna use for attaching the two layers together. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit messy and I'm just not wanting it to be shown all that much. If, if it goes together really neat and tidy, I might go over it with the lighter colors so it shows, but right now the black is gonna do well for me. This is wax. If my thread starts getting really tangly, I can show you how to use it. Uh, one of the sides has slits through it, the other doesn't, so you gotta check which side you're using. You just put it in here and then you can pull your thread through the wax and it will help straighten it out and make it not tangle as much as you're sewing. And when you wear down the spot that this is through, you just open it up and spin that around a little, but this one is, this one's still taped shut so it hasn't been used as much. And of course, a pair of scissors. I just really enjoy these because they open themselves. They are Tula Pinks. And I have a needle threader because sometimes I can't see very well. And this is a 
thread puller. So sometimes my fingers just don't want to grip or maybe my fingers have gotten sweaty and the needle is really stuck now. It's really nice to just pull the needle through using it because it has a really good grip. Quilters like using these. Um, it's basically like a jar opener that you would use in the kitchen. We got all the stuff. Let's get sewing. So I'm going to start by just using a little bit of glue to tack it down. I, my glue here is not meant for longevity. It's just meant to make it easier for me to sew so it doesn't move. And if it's not quite in the right spot, you know, give it a wiggle. That's why I put glue really only like in a stripe so it wouldn't end up places I didn't want. The nose, super tiny. It's gonna be hard no matter what, but you might have enough like left over on the edge. I'm gonna stick that nose on. I will probably cover most of the nose with embroidery, but that's okay. It's still good to put it there. And then we have our little wings. Make sure they are the direction I want. There we go, super cute. And again, this is gonna go on the back if you wanna stuff it. And it's also going to hide all of your embroidery work. Um, that is the back of your embroidery work, the part you really don't wanna show necessarily. So we're gonna do everything on this layer and then we'll put that back on to hide the dirty work. I'm gonna set this aside while it dries and we're gonna get our thread ready. As I said, we're gonna use the black when we put the layers together. So I'll set that aside for now. This dark one, hmm, which color? Which color? It is hard to choose. We'll just start with this gray. Oh, it already has a piece for me. How lovely. Embroidery floss is made up of individual threads and you get to decide how many threads you use in any part. So something that's a finer detail will use less threads. You can even use all of the threads. This one has six in it. Most of the time it's six, although I have seen embroidery flosses with eight. And you just kind of run your hand down the center and separate them. And then they will roll up like crazy, but that is okay. Some people actually like ironing their embroidery floss first. I am not one of those people, but that's okay. I got a piece there and a piece here. And then I'm going to run this through the wax. That will also help straighten it all out. There we go. And the next piece. I'm going to sew with one string, meaning I'm not gonna put a knot in the end of both of them together, but that's a personal preference again. If you are going to knot them together, give yourself some more length, because that's not very long. So everything is now just lightly held together, which will make things easier. I guess I should have probably added a little extra glue to that wing. We'll get back to that. Is that one held on? No, not really. Okay, let's just work with this part. So I am going to the back here and I'm just taking a little piece of the fabric. I'm gonna take another little stitch. What I'm doing is I'm actually sewing my thread in. Instead of putting a knot there that could cause a bump, I'm just taking a couple of little stitches And that makes it so my thread doesn't come out in the end. So now it's quite secure. So we're gonna go over to this side and I am going to aim right here. I want to come out, I'm gonna start on the side. I don't know why, it's just where I'm starting. Around here, I'm gonna do a buttonhole stitch. You can do any stitch you want. This is just what I'm gonna do. So the first stitch is just a stitch. I'm gonna go down, looks regular and everything. Yep, that's just how you set up the beginning of it. Now I'm gonna take a stitch out in that exact same spot. I pulled it a little tight. And now I'm gonna go down and up right at the edge. And I'm gonna catch my thread then my thread is going to lay along the edge there. Now that we have two stitches in, it all kind of makes sense now. We just go down and up and pull and it will lay right along the edge. 
You can, of course, draw on your finger like the distance that you want your stitches to be. I'm just going to eyeball it. And part of the trick with this one is not pulling too tight. You want to have a little bit of slack so that embroidery floss stays right along the edge instead of being pulled in a weird direction. So at the moment I'm making these all relatively similar. I mean, that one was way closer, but whatever. When you get to the head, you'll probably want to do them a little bit smaller because these look very chonky when it's up by the head. I understand that I am weaving it in and out and that may be difficult for you if you're not very experienced with a needle. I'm going to show you another way too. I'm going to release that a little bit because I pulled it a tad tight. So you can absolutely go down where you want it to be. You can keep this loop up here and then you can come up where you want it to be. Then again, pull lightly and do the same thing. You definitely want to make sure you're getting some of that black part because this is what you're doing to secure the white to the black. So if you're only sewing over the white part and not catching any of the black, um, yeah, it won't really be attaching it. So this gray is not necessarily giving tons of contrast here. Um, I think black might have been a really good option to give you like a lot of contrast and really show off those stitches. You could even done like a glittery thread or red. I, go crazy. The black would not have shown the straight line around the edge, but it would have shown the stitches going in more. I guess it depends on what your goal is. If you want to show off your stitching, pick a color that really contrasts. If you want too high mediocre stitching, maybe contrast less. Mine is pretty mediocre, so um, I guess I'm good with this contrast. Okay, now we're getting to weird spots. This is small up here, so I started by taking a smaller stitch there. I'm going to pull that down, go up, catch that thread. And I've switched methods right now just so that I'm not flinging it around on you because I know I move it a lot when I'm stitching, and that can be really disorienting. Now when we get to these curve, you're going to basically stitch in the same spot a couple times to get around the corner. I don't want to spin my thread, and it is definitely trying to spin. I could wax it more. Yikes. There we go. You can see here I have a fair amount of extra thread, and it's kind of getting bubbly. And I can actually just work up that extra thread through each stitch if I think it's too bubbly. Okay, next stitch is going to be the same general location. So I'm trying to turn the corner. There we go. And then we're going to keep going. I'm going to flip it around and do what's a little bit more natural for my hands. Again, we're at that corner, so we're basically going to stitch in the same spot, but go farther around the corner. So I have this much thread left and this much penguin left. Hmm. Maybe I should have given myself more thread to start with, but uh, yeah, we're here. So either I can try to make that stretch. It's not going to. Or I can just tell myself that it's not going to and not try to get that very last stitch out of this thread. Just give myself enough to nicely stop. See, I almost just unthreaded my needle there. So this is probably actually a good time to stop. And let me show you how to stop. So I've taken that stitch. That stitch is done. I'm going to go right next to it so I can end off that loop and that all of these stay where I put them. Now we're going to go to the back. We're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to wiggle our needle into the center so we get away from that edge. And then we're going to take some stitches. And that is secured. Snip it off and thread my needle up again. If you don't have a needle threader, you can totally do this. You just stick that thread in your mouth, get it nice and wet, well, not sopping wet, but you know, a little moist. And then you push it so it's in like a flat line. 
before you try to get it through the needle. So I'm gonna be aiming, I can either start there or I can end there, but I prefer to go this direction, so we'll start there. Taking a couple of small stitches, making sure it's nice and secured. Check on the outside where I'm aiming. I'm aiming to actually come up right here because I want to start a new one. That was nowhere near where I want it to be. And there we have start, started and stopped a thread. So this buttonhole stitch is just a really fun one for embroidery. It highlights the edge. It looks very rustic, vintage. It just has that, that homemade feel when homemade's not a bad word. Handcrafted feel. And it's easy. You don't have to think too hard. Just the starting and the stop and take a moment. And it's just one stitch to repeat. Okay, here we are back at the beginning pulling this one. I'm gonna stick this right where the first one started. So it's contiguous. All looks like it went together. I'm on the back again, going into my middle. Oops, I don't wanna strangle my penguin. There we go. So next up, I'm gonna do the beak and probably the eyeballs. The beak needs yellow. I'm considering not splitting this, just using all of it because the beak kind of comes forward. So it could be bulkier. And it might look really good, but I am not gonna get eight strands through that needle. I guess I'm gonna pare it down. I could do four. And I'll just do the three. So it's the same weight as my other stitches. So sometimes it gets like that. It's because the the twirling happened too quickly on just one of them. So sometimes you gotta work it open with your hands and then to help them straighten out. So I am not gonna be doing a buttonhole stitch on the nose. I am just gonna do some satin stitches, some big stitches. You could do the nose without the piece of felt there. I just thought it'd be fun to have the felt under there. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not going too deep I don't want to go to where the yellow could show through the white. Gosh, I'm getting all off center, sorry. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna start out here, go down to the point. Then I'm just gonna work my way along the top edge, going pretty close to the point, but not quite all the way through the same hole. It will help the beak look elongated because the stitches are in that direction. You can see where I'm starting to actually like struggle to pull my needle through. It's because of all these threads in the same spot. It can be kind of rough. And that's where the little rubber gripper can be really helpful. Also by leaving the yellow here, I don't have to have complete coverage with my thread. I can leave some gaps, which actually kind of create depth it's kind of fun. And you don't only have to go for like from one spot to another spot. Look up, look at it, see what you think. See if there's something missing. See if you want to change it. You can always pull the thread out. And then I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what one across the top looks like. Hmm, that's cute. And then maybe I'll start a little bit past the point that I've already made and do like one more round of outlining so it's on top of all the other stitches I made. Whoa, that's really getting dense. There we go. Well, I think it's cute. It's a little off center, but no one's perfect. The penguin is looking sideways. That must be it. Cute. Okay, now we have the wings. These were not tacked on the um, amount that I had hoped they would be. So I'm gonna add a little more glue and then wait just a little bit. Oh, that is, that is too much glue. Yikes. Okay, um, if I put this one in here and then bring it over here. Okay, that looks better. Share the glue. Again, glue is just something to help me have things hold still. And it makes it easier for me to show you things because I'm not also holding this at the same time as everything else. So we're just gonna let that dry and I'll come back and finish it in a little bit. Okay, these these wings are on. It's still a little tacky, but whatever. It'll hold them in place. So we're gonna get the light gray again. We're gonna need more of this. So I'm just gonna start with a bigger piece and then we'll use that when we run out of this. Longer piece for the win. Split it three and three. What I do is I hold the ends separate and then I put my thumb in between. The other end of my hand is like dealing with this knot. 
And then you just kind of start from the top again, and it all ends up working out in the end. Wax it if you want, do it if you don't. Iron it, whatever makes you happy. I don't tend to iron mine or wax mine. I just struggle with them instead. Like I'm struggling with this. There we go. And I only managed to get two of the threads. There's the third one. Hmm. Well, I didn't actually want to use a thinner line on that, so I guess I gotta add that third one back in. And I guess now I'm gonna have to wax it to hopefully get those to stick together a little better as I'm working, because they come uh, came unwound so they're not quite as stable as they once were yikes I'm hitting everything I'm losing my needle threader what am I doing struggling and that is what I'm doing I am struggling so what stitch did I do on these wings um on this one it just it really didn't have enough contrast to show Let's see this the white on here just really pops but I'm not sure I love the white We'll do the same stitch, I guess. I don't know. Could also just do a whip stitch. So we, as I said, are going to still be hiding the back, but the part that sticks out beyond here is not gonna be hidden. It's going to be showing. So we want to be mindful of that as we are stitching to make sure we keep our back looking nice. I will start in here. That is not where I should have started. I need to start under the edge. What am I doing? So there is our first stitch. And now we come up right here so we can continue that line. Just tying up this penguin. So now we're getting to the part which will show beyond the wing. And I did the basic same stitch here so you can see the other side of it. It looks nearly identical. So it, it looks pretty good. So it's okay to continue that stitch all the way around. Or once you get to the point, that's a good spot to just switch to another stitch. If you're bored with this one, it is a spot that makes sense to change things up because it's a change in direction. I am just causing a mess. As I said, I don't like waxing my thread. I just like struggling, but I did wax this just not very much. Okay, here I have the point and you can decide where you want this first one to go I think I want this one like on this edge and then I'll work on the point so I took a stitch too close to the edge and it actually just went through the edge okay so there we go this one's gonna be on the point or slightly on the other side of the point because that's where it fell and I like it there we go and then I'm just gonna work my way around the other side and I lost a wing I really should have waited for the glue to dry. So this is what the other side of the wing looks like. Okay, we're back to the beginning. I'm just gonna stab right in there. There we go. So I'm actually gonna let that other wing dry. Otherwise it's gonna probably end up at a very odd angle when we're done squishing that together. I'll finish this one off and come back to do the other wing. Okay, so we got our two sides here. And all that's left on this one is the eyeballs. I have my thread in black. That's what I'm gonna use for the eyeballs. And they are going to be a French knot. If you have ever done a quilter's knot, it's the exact same thing. But um, I don't expect you to have done that before. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Make sure it's not gonna pull out. And then we need to have our needle come up where we want that eyeball to be. Now we're gonna make our thread into a circle. So my needle is going to be aiming up the thread like to be in a full circle and then I'm gonna wrap my needle with thread I suggest you count so that you do both eyeballs the same number the size is the same so one two three four five six six seems good Then I'm gonna roll it down so it's pretty darn close and then I'm gonna stab that needle back in basically in the same spot now I like to keep my thumbnail like on top of that knot those loops it's not a knot yet but it will be keep it on top of those loops so they don't try to go crazy places and just pull it all the way in there you go you got an eyeball well let's do the other one we'll slide under try to figure out where that other eye should be that looks reasonable so same thing again my thread and my needle are going to form a circle again we're going to count one two three four five six 
gonna roll those down. I know I have the tail in here, so it's visually complicated. There we go. Thanks. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Let me get this down as far as I can, and I'm gonna drop my needle right back in where it came out. I'm gonna put my thumbnail on top of all those loops so that they stay right near the fabric. It also means if I run into things like this, hopefully I can solve it. So I had a, a little catch in my thread, and so now I have an entire mess. Yikes. See, this happens sometimes. It's not that you want it to happen. No, you don't want any of these things to happen, but they do sometimes. So we have worked out the problem now. I do not know if this eyeball is going to be salvageable, though. Well, that's our knot, and our knot is stuck now. Mm. Unfortunate. Okay, so I am going to cut that off. And I'm going to just cut that knot as well. We're just going to pull through and try again. That is one of the reasons that I tend to duck under some threads back here after I've done one because if the next one doesn't work for some reason, I am not completely out. And um, I've lost a thread. How did I lose a thread? But I did, I lost a thread. I'm just gonna go to my other piece of black. Got our thread, I'm gonna attach it again. Whoops, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, now let's find our eyeball. There we go, okay. Same thing as before. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, put it right back in the same hole or very close to it. I'll stick my needle on all those loops. Make sure my thread is not knotted down there. Ta-da! It's like magic. It's the, they take some work. It takes, it's a learning curve. When I was in 4-H as a teenager, I had a really hard time with French knots and my mom helped me with a project and did some of them, but she made me do them as well. And so now I get it. And of course I do quilters knots. It's like the main form of the way I tie things off. So it actually, it, it makes a lot of sense. I wish I knew quilters knots at the time because then I would have understood how these work. Time to sew these layers together. So we have a penguin that could be fine as is, but I don't like the messy back. I want my back to be hidden. So I am going to put it back on this and I'm going to put a slight bit of stuffing in it before it gets closed up. So I just lined the two up right on top of each other. I'm going to pull this wing out of the way and I'm just going to do a whip stitch. Just means around, come out one side, go up over the top and go back in. It's a really fast stitch and because this is black on black, it's really not showing. You can't really even see what I'm doing. Let me let me grab a different needle. Maybe you can see what the stitch looks like. That would be helpful, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just going around. You can make them as close or as far as way as you want. So I'm coming out the front, I'm going over the top, and I'm poking in the back. I'm just repeating that over and over. This is a whip stitch. The difference between the other stitches, it doesn't leave that one thread lane across the edge. It has these sort of diagonal lines. Let's pull this yellow out and keep going with the black, which you can't really see at all, but I kind of didn't want this to show because I wanted to hide them. But um, as I've said before, if you're hand stitching it, and you like your hand stitching, you shouldn't probably hide it. You should use contrast. So after I go around with the black and hold everything together, I might go around with another color to use the contrast because no one's gonna see the black. And so basically I'm sewing right now and you can't see anything that I'm doing. This is super interesting to you, right? Well, it may be boring, but it is what we're doing. It is super quick though, so I'm gonna just fold the wing out of the way. That's not quite so easy over here where they're both attached. So it's okay to like kind of do a diagonal stitch to get under there. So I am getting around to the beginning. I have this hole right now and that seems like a good time for me to put some stuffing in. I have a pile of stuffing here. I do not need anywhere near this amount, but penguins should be a little round, right? Okay, so small chunks. That was probably way too big. I never take as small of chunks as I need to when I'm stuffing things. Oh, see how cute that is? He gets a little round and poofy. 
Okay. I am using these scissors. They have a blunt end. A chopstick would be a great option. A pencil. The eraser on a pencil is so helpful for stuffing things. Oh, I'm glad I decided to stuff this. So my stuffing is white, so it is gonna show if it gets out of the edge. So I'm just kind of pushing my edges together and then using my needle to shove that stuffing back in. So my join between the two sides is going to start and end under this wing, which does make it easy to hide anything. But as I said, the black on black thread is basically hiding everything already. Okay, now we got thread end and we don't have a back anymore, right? We don't have a way to hide it. And we still do. So I'm gonna go across here. I'm gonna feel my way through the middle. I don't wanna go out on the white. I wanna come out on the black. So I'm letting my thread go all the way through the center. And I'm gonna do that again. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna pop out on his butt. I don't think I'm gonna sew around the edge with a different color. I like it the way it is. Maybe I should have taken a little bit smaller stitches up here around the top edge. So all he needs is he, she, um, this penguin, all this penguin needs is a hanger. And you can absolutely use embroidery floss. Um, I think a few pieces like braided together would make a lot of sense. Um, maybe Christmas colors braided together would look super cute. But um, in the end, you can literally just use one embroidery floss. So you'll, um, you'll need to be able to get it through a needle. So if your needle is not big enough, pick a different one. Um, a crochet hook would also work really well for this. I'm gonna pull it through this gigantic needle. Yeah, that wasn't even struggle. That's how big the eye is. I'm gonna just attach it right here on the top. Let's pull one of these through. There we go. And I tie it, maybe two knots. Off the extra, and then I want to pull it so the knot is at the back of the head. And I can even like take a couple of stitches and sew this knot down. It's a really good idea, actually. So I'm sewing over the knot that's at the back of the head. I'm also sewing over the knot tails to hold them down so they're not gonna stick up and look weird. So the other amazing thing that you can do when you have something that you're embroidering is personalizing it. You can put it on the tummy right here. You can put the ear. You could also put it on the butt or the back. I mean, it doesn't literally have to be the butt. It could just be the back. Yay, it's a name. It's very close to a D. I could take another little stitch there and there to round it out, but everything else is pretty angular, so I think it works. I have now have a penguin that has been cut on the Cricut, hand embroidered. We have a hanger for it and it's personalized to Dan. Check out this video's description for a link to where to get this penguin and other penguin items on my website, fabricninja.com.